As we await the release of special counsel Robert Mueller's final report on his investigation into the relationship between Trump's campaign and the Russian government, another investigation has already begun looking into the motivations of an FBI report which ultimately led to Mueller's investigation. At the heart of that initial FBI report is the man who joins me in studio today, George Papadopoulos, former advisor to Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. His ties between Russian nationals and the Trump campaign ensnared him in an investigation which eventually led to his arrest and a guilty plea for lying to investigators. He says he was a patsy in an international espionage conspiracy and he attempts to explain it now in his new book, Deep State Target, How I Got Caught in the Crosshairs of the Plot to Bring Down President Trump. He joins me in studio. How did you get crosshairs? How did you get caught? What did you do? Oh, thanks a lot for having me, Larry. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do my best uh, with the limited time we have to explain this incredible story. Um, so first of all, how did I even join the Ben Carson and Donald Trump campaigns? Because that's actually the origins of how I got caught in this crosshairs. Uh, I had been working at the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. for five years leading up to uh, the 2015 presidential campaign season, where I was working with personalities like Doug Fyth, Seth Cropsey, Scooter Libby. These were all the Bush, George H.W., George W. Bush, Reagan officials who were basically the neoconservatives of our country and at that time, who were my mentors and colleagues. Fast forward to the summer of 2015, I see an opportunity to leverage those ties to join presidential campaigns. I had been working on very sensitive projects with these individuals regarding energy discoveries in the Mediterranean, offshore Israel, and how that would affect both U.S. policy towards Israel and the Middle East in general, and obviously security partnerships. So we were promoting an agenda at the time that was anathema to the Obama administration. Those countries were listening to us. I remember we were hosting conferences at the Hudson Institute that were attracting the ambassadors of these countries, ministers, even the prime minister. We were being invited to go over to Israel, to Cyprus, to Egypt, to meet with so their leaders. Israel was your bailiwick. Yes, okay. Israel was exactly... So how did all this... That's exactly... So, so I get involved with this. There's, there's a target on me. This is what I later found out, actually uh, just uh, recently by Congressman Mark Meadows, who's been... Uh, releasing testimonies from various members of the FBI, the DOJ, and even my testimony, which suggests that because of those ties, I had a FISA warrant and other surveillance warrants on me that resulted in this target that followed me through the campaign and resulted in all of these various uh, characters and spies that I detail in my book to come after me. Why you? That's, exa that's a great question. Uh, my, my belief is because I was in London at the time when I was working on the Trump campaign and because of this target that had been following me between the time I was on the Ben Carson campaign and Trump campaign, it was much easier to have me under surveillance in a foreign country because that's where I was based for the first two months of the campaign. So while I was in London, all of a sudden I would start to have these intelligence officials from the U.S. Embassy in London reach out to me. I had British government officials, Australian government officials, at the highest levels you could imagine. Alexander Downer, who was uh, the head of uh, the Australian equivalent of the CIA for 17 years, uh, the DIA, uh, br the number two at the British Foreign Ministry Affairs. These guys were all reaching out to me, asking me a couple questions. One, what's your involvement with the Israelis? <laughs> and two, what's Trump doing with the Russians? This is what this was all about, so. Did you have Russian connections? That's the, that's the million dollar question, and that my answer is I've never been to Russia. I've never met a Russian official in my entire life. And actually, all of my work leading up to my, work, my time on the campaign was very hostile to Russia. Because I was in the energy business, and the last thing you're doing as an American person is promoting Russian uh, interests. But didn't you, in that meetings with Donald Trump, say that you could introduce him will get him involved with Russians? That's the key part of this entire uh, conspiracy. The guy who I met who told me that he could introduce Trump to, the, to Vladimir Putin and all to the Russians was actually introduced to me by an FBI intermediary in London at a company I used to work for. And then all of a sudden, one day, this man, Joseph Mipsud, he's a Maltese academic and former diplomat, connected to various uh, socialist groups in Europe and uh, even to the Clintons, over lunch in London at this beautiful hotel, he tells me, hey, George, you know that the Russians have Hillary Clinton's emails? 
and I, and I was dumbfounded. I stood back and I said, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why are you telling me this information? And he was acting like he was an intermediary between Trump and Putin, but he never even could introduce me to any Russian official. So I was suspicious. Fast forward to my FBI interview. That got me in trouble. I tell the FBI when they're asking me, have you been in talks with Russians or about hacked emails or anything like that after they had been talking to me about my contacts with the Israelis for two hours? I said no, but there was this man, Joseph Mifsud, this Maltese man who told me that the Russians have emails. You should look into him. I noticed something very strange about the FBI agents' responses. There was no response. It's as if I told them the sky is blue and two plus two equals four when I told them this information about this man who had apparent information about Russians and Hillary Clinton's emails. And now what's been re revealed and what's unfortunately after I pled guilty and I couldn't take my guilty plea back, that this guy looked like he was working with Western intelligence operatives and uh, possibly the CIA itself. Why did you plead guilty? Well, look, at the time I pled guilty, uh, I had been violently arrested at an airport. Okay, I was under sealed. I Violently could, arrested? Well, I had seven FBI agents essentially rush me off of a, of a shuttle bus at an airport after I hadn't slept in 30 hours. I'm thrown into the back seat of a tinted black SUV, thrown in a prison cell without un understanding why I was being arrested. So I get there, I start negotiating with the special counsel. I have no idea what's going on. You know, they're talking in circles. They're describing this character, Joseph Mipsod, as some sort of Russian spy, but he never was, obviously. That's what the big scandal is today. And uh, I basically plead guilty without understanding exactly what the real case was against me. You want a pardon? Uh, look, my, I have new legal counsel now <laughs> for a reason, because uh, those other lawyers I had obviously weren't up to par with this insane situation, and they formally have applied for a pardon now. They think there's a just reason and basis for that. I don't expect it, but if I'm obviously granted one, I'd honorably accept it. Were you hurt when Trump kind of dismissed you? You know what? As the, a non-entity? <laughs> you know what? Uh, the way my status of offense was written in such a bizarre manner and filled with lies and innuendo, uh, I would have done the same thing if I was Donald Trump. I would have distanced myself from somebody who worked for me too if it looked like he was up to no good. So now obviously that the facts are coming out and you know people are really understanding what this entire fabricated investigation was all about. The president himself, just a couple days ago, was retweeting on his Twitter account a segment about my story and about my setup. So the, t the tides have changed. I've gone from a pariah uh, within the Republican Party and possibly even the country itself to now basically somebody who could possibly expose a, uh, a possibly the biggest spying scandal in uh, modern history. Are you still a fan of the president's? I uh, think the president is doing an incredible job. I never lost faith in the president. I knew my story from the beginning. Okay, I just was under a gag order and I couldn't talk. And I couldn't ha go on shows like yours or others and reveal the truth of what really happened in my case. And uh, I think the president was under tremendous pressure the last two years and he still was able to govern in an incredible, in an incredible fashion. He's doing great work with China by imposing tariffs. He's fulfilling his campaign promises regarding uh, immigration. And obviously security in this country and around the world is being stabilized now with the defeat of ISIS. So he's, I think, in foreign policy, the economy, he's doing an incredible job. And now that the handcuffs have obviously been, uh, un, been removed from him regarding this investigation, it's probably going to help propel him to a 2020 victory. As you look back, with the Mueller report kind of balancing everything out, you didn't have to plead guilty, did you? That's exactly the, 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 the really sad situation. But you know what? Life is a, it's an incredible journey. And it might have been my destiny to plead guilty because if I didn't, maybe no one would have known who I was or what the story involved. So, I, yeah, I pled guilty. I did 11 nights in jail. You know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. Of course, no one wants to go to jail. But um, I don't know. Maybe uh, that was my destiny, and it's going to expose something a lot more sinister than... Uh, these fake uh, Russian contacts that I apparently had <laughs> that caught me in the middle of this crosshair. Uh, do you try to get in contact with the president at all? You know, for two years I was uh, legally uh, prohibited from uh, talking to the president, his team, or anyone in my circles. So imagine being a doctor and you're not allowed to operate on your patients. You could be the best doctor in the world, but if you can't talk to your patients or operate on them, you're essentially you know, out of the loop. So just recently, 
that gag order and uh, that restriction has been lifted. And, uh, you know, I haven't talked to the president, uh, obviously, directly, and I, that's not my intention, but I've been going on, uh, you know, Fox and uh, MSNBC and CNN and programs like yours, and I'm sure he's listened to uh, some of the things I've been saying. What do you make of the whole Mueller investigation? In my, uh, in a couple sentences, I believe the Mueller investigation was designed for one reason and one reason only, and that was to cover up surveillance abuse by the Obama administration on people like myself, uh, Mike Flynn, Manafort, and Carter Page. But unfortunately, um, that's not going to happen because the president uh, just a couple days ago or maybe last week was on Hannity, and Hannity asked him a couple of questions. Are you going to pardon Papadopoulos and Flynn? He demurred and he said, look, it's a sad situation. We'll, look, we'll get back to that later. But right now, the most important thing is declassifying all this FISA abuse material, the 302s, and figuring out how this entire investigation started. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, when that happens, it's going to probably present a much more clear picture to the American public. I'll give you some names. Just give me a quick thought. Sure. Mueller. Uh, corrupt. Corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Trump. Outstanding. Sessions. Uh, falsely uh, un unethical. Hope Hicks. Uh, stalwart. Peter Strzok. <laughs> uh, I... Peter Strzok, uh, another corrupt official. Putin. Uh, Putin, a smart guy. Netanyahu. Outstanding leader. Are your prime interests internationally still Israel? Yeah, so that's actually what my entire business was. I was an energy advisor working and promoting American companies in Israel. So I spent a lot of time in uh, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and in that part of the world promoting uh, not only American companies operating there, but obviously promoting it, Israel as an independent energy producer. So uh, I still have contacts there. We'll see what happens now as my story comes out. And if I'm exonerated, I'd love to get back to uh, doing a little more business in Israel and that part of the world for sure. Great seeing you. Thank you so much, Larry. I really appreciate you having me.